So that's for uh, my contribution. We have uh, uh, some time for a few questions on uh, technology, ethics, and economy in healthcare. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Randy Coty. I'm a graduate student at the Kennedy School and an incoming French public servant. Uh, my question is, um, during COVID, we've seen how technology has become a key and strategic capability. But the question is, who should develop those technologies and who should own them? Uh, should it be the private sector for maybe efficiency concerns and also for the fact that there will be more independence on that? Or should it be more on the state side um, for ethics concerns, actually? Because people would maybe trust their states more in some places or on a, in other places would be more Apple, Facebook. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jacques, do you want to take the question? You take this question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, well, thanks for the great question. Um, actually, I, I think I gave a pretty pessimistic view of, of the relation of the, of the system, but there are good news, and the good news is that there is plenty, uh, there's a big reservoir of, of productivity due to augmented intelligence, so, uh, which will make uh, which, which would make it possible to get rid of many of the in inefficiency in the system. Now, the question of who owns that is a big question, you know, um, and, and again, we lack time, and, and I think this would be uh, a, an encouragement to Thierry to go ahead with more thoughts being given by IFRI to uh, healthcare issues. Uh, I currently have a project, for instance, uh, which uh, leads to uh, roll out uh, artificial intelligence into pathology. And the question is, who owns that? Uh, is it the engineer, the physician, the people who provided the data which made it possible, the hospital, etc.? So it's a big question. We don't have much time. Uh, I think in the end, the profit has to be shared between the various players. Uh, once again, the good news is that there is a reservoir of productivity. And, and so we should all work together First of all, to see how it is possible to really grasp this reservoir and, and how we share it in an intelligent way and in an equitable way. So I defer this question to uh, another meeting, Thierry, if you are interested in going ahead with, the, with this theme. Okay. We have a question from Michel, as a chairman of the previous panel. I wonder what you have to... Thank you, very, thank you very much. Um, uh, this is a question to Dr. Kim and Carlos Moreira, maybe. Um, I think beyond uh, the technological progress and beyond the issue of consent, I think what you've been talking about is a major revolution to me, which is um, that these technologies will lead to self-responsible management of health by the people. Until now, the patient somehow, and the name patient, the word patient is speaking by itself, was a passive object uh, versus the healthcare system. Now the patient will become the responsible actor. And that, of course, has a lot of implications in terms of what's his source of information and whether we should leave the decision to, to the patient. Um, and I wonder whether you, you, you can comment on that. Can I go first? Yeah. yeah. So, Is that uh, a question for me? Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I will go first. Actually, the, um, in the diagnostic field, there is a self-testing system. The rapid immunosec kit is uh, one of the, uh, the examples. So and I, the FDA have a process for the uh, self-testing for clear test, clear way of the test, that kind of things can be uh, done by simple process. For example, if you have the one drop of blood, and then you can see the band, one band or two band. If you have a single band that is negative, if you see the double band is positive, very simple for the determination. Uh, that kind of simple system uh, can be applicable at home. If I just, just completing the answer, um, I, I think that the, the, it needs regulation. The, the fact of moving from passive, which is what we should be, to be uh, an automatic, like a default login into somebody assessing our health, it's, it's something that can only be 
resolved by legislation. You know, the, there's HIPAA regulation in the United States, there's other regulation in the United States, in, in, in Europe, but that's actually it's very vague in who owns the data. The, the data should be owned by us, by the patient, not by the uh, system. If, if we own the data and it's under our consent, then we have a protection, as we have everywhere else. Uh, we have in the financial system, right? And the bank is not authorized to do anything without our consent. That level of consent needs to be installed in, in the health industry. Now it's not the case. Now the, the data belongs to the uh, health institution, and this is, this is wrong. The data should belong to us. And we can give them their, their consent to use that data. If the data belongs to them by default, then by default, we will let artificial intelligence and other technologies to data mine that data. Okay, thank you. I think we come to the end of the session. Uh, thank you very much for, to my colleague panelists on the insightful presentation for your question. And as we have the bus in the room, I would not dare to overrun. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah.